close enough, it would blow the atmosphere off the planet. Here we're sitting one minute in this beautiful, nice, cloudy day, and then boom, where'd the air go? And it is literally blown off into space. Given that gamma ray bursts are the most destructive things that happen in the universe, if these things happen close enough, there's just no possibility that any type of life could survive such an event. It would literally eviscerate the entire surface of the planet, burn it to a crisp, nothing could survive. No one is sure what caused this mass extinction. The gamma ray burst is one compelling theory. If true, then the countdown to mass extinction of all life on planet Earth has begun. Thousands of light years from the rocketing death rays, Earth orbits peacefully, unaware of the impending doom. This is a glimpse 450 million years into the past, the Ordovician period, a vastly different world from today. The continents as we know them now are still part of several land masses. Gondwana encompasses Australia, Africa, Southern Europe, Antarctica, and South America. Fragments of North America, Western and Northern Europe are concentrated at the equator. The planet is warm and wet, with sea levels hundreds of feet higher than they are now. The surface of this world is more like Venus than modern Earth. The oxygen level is so low any animal would struggle for every breath. If you put a human back in the Ordovician, the oxygen concentrations would have been such that probably a simple walk on the beach would have been very strenuous. The land would be extremely barren, but would pretty much look like the land looks today in places like Death Valley. Just no green, no animals. Because of that also, it would have been extremely quiet. None of the noises that we associate with animals that you would hear in a forest, like birds, even insects, none of that would have been present back in the Ordovician. The surface world may be desolate, but underwater, it's a different story. This rich seascape will one day be a desert sitting under the Las Vegas Strip. For now, it's a bustling city in its own right, a vast coral reef teeming with weird inhabitants. There is a perception, I think, oh, it's ancient, it's 500 million years old, it must have been empty. It wasn't empty, it was full. It was just differently full than we have today. Certainly organisms were living in the deep sea, they were living in the water column, they were living in the sediment, on the sediment then much of the western U.S. would have been a shallow marine habitat, much of the middle of the U.S., Cincinnati, and much of the Appalachians would have been habitats that aren't equivalent to anything we have today. Reefs just like this span the globe. Their warm, sunlit waters are the perfect home for the planet's rapidly evolving life forms. Along these reefs, two-foot-long trilobites scavenge for food. Related to today's ants, these industrious creatures keep the seafloor clean, gobbling up almost anything they can find, dead plankton, bits of algae, even animal waste. <laughs> 